is a presentation of Fox Sports. We are Fox Sports. We are Ohio. The eyes of Texas are upon the Indians as the Rangers have taken two straight and the Tribe has lost four out of five on the homestand. Now news that one of their outfielders is gone for the season. The formula for the Indians score early and score first. And Trevor Bauer will try to give the offense a chance to do both next on Sports Time Ohio. It is a beautiful baseball night in Ohio as the Cleveland Indians take on the Texas Rangers one more time here at Progressive Field. The Indians try to avoid being swept at the hands of their rivals from the American League's Western Division. Hi again everyone Matt Underwood alongside Rick Manning. If that was all the Indians had to worry about going into tonight's game then it would probably be a good day. But unfortunately that's not the case. Marlon Byrd. Word came down late this afternoon. He has been suspended for 162 games for a second positive test for using performance enhancing drugs and in all likelihood his career at age 38 is now over. Yeah you would certainly think so because it would be halfway into next year before he would even be eligible to play and like you said it's the second time and it's the second time that an Indians player has uh, been suspended this year. The Indians called up Tyler Naquin to take Bird's spot on the roster, so he'll be in uniform tonight. Also, Tom Gorzolani, left-hander up, Sean Armstrong went back to Triple A Columbus. Speaking of pitching, Trevor Bowers on the hill tonight for the Indians. He's got to do a good job of keeping the Rangers off the board early. Well, what he did in his last start gave up three first inning runs against Baltimore, but he really settled in, pitched nicely after that, five shutout innings, and they came back to tie that game. He had a no decision. But in his career against the Texas Rangers, he's made two starts. He does not have a decision and a 461 ERA but he will be matched up against a tough left hander Cole Hamels he doesn't uh, have a win against the Indians and he has an ERA just a tick under 10 because they've gotten to him the both times that they have faced him and in his last start the Pittsburgh Pirates had an idea of what to do with Cole Hamels because that was his first loss he had uh, 12 consecutive wins as a Texas Ranger and only the second time he has taken a loss in that uniform Rick since the start of last year when Cole Hamels gets three runs of support or more he is 17 and 2 so again important for power to try to keep the Rangers off the board early here tonight. Indians Rangers play by play coming up next plus we'll check in with Andre Dott. he'll have the latest on the Marlin Bird suspension story from inside the Indians clubhouse that's straight ahead. Cleveland Indians baseball is brought to you by W.B. Mason the official office supplier of the Cleveland Indians by McDonald's I'm loving it and by your local Toyota dealers visit buyatoyota.com. Toyota let's go places.
Well, we're just about ready for baseball tonight here in Progressive Field. Before we get the game underway, though, one last order of business with regards to Marlon Bird. How does it play in the clubhouse among his teammates? Let's go down to Andre Knott with more on that. Well, it's been a hectic day to say the least here at Progressive Field and dealing with the Marlon Bird situation. Tonight we go inside the clubhouse with the reaction from the teammates of Marlon Bird as well as the team's president and tonight's Hear Right Sounds of the Game. So last night Marlon packed up his locker um, and started putting some of his things together. So after the game, Tito called Marlon just to check in what, what was going on. Uh, Marlon said he had some things going on and that he wanted to talk to Tito today. So he and Tito met this morning. Um, and then, you know, Marlon shared the news with Tito at that point. Marlon came in and talked to his teammates and the coaches and stood up in front of everybody and took responsibility and apologized and also basically told the guys that his career is over and this is not how he wanted it to end. He, he wasn't happy, as nor, nor should he be. Um, he was telling guys to be careful what you put in your bodies, be careful who you trust, and uh, it's a very good message to send. Um, and he's, 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 he's down that uh, he doesn't get to go. This is his last year. He doesn't get to go on his own terms. Um, now his career is, he puts it, is over, and uh, that's not going to sit well with him for a long time. And he doesn't want to see that happen to anyone else, which I thought was uh, a good thing to say to the teammates that you're leaving. And, um, so, like I said, uh, we're gonna miss him. You're gonna. It's unfortunate he made the decision. If it happened, if it wasn't a system, and uh, but he was a good guy to all of us. And as the saying goes, the show must go on. The train leaves without Marlon Board aboard, and the Indians have called up Tyler Naquin. He'll be in the outfield to help out. Not in the starting lineup uh, here tonight, but certainly he'll uh, be a guy to kind of put into the mix. Whether or not the Indians do anything outside of that, try and bolster the club remains to be seen. That man, Trevor Bauer, will get the start tonight. The Indians also made a move with regards to the bullpen. We have a left-hander, Tom Gorzolani, who's been called up. He's in the bullpen as Sean Armstrong went back to the minor leagues. Tomorrow, another roster move will have to be made when right. Carlos Carrasco comes off the disabled list to make the start against the Kansas City Royals. So Naquin back, Armstrong optioned. He was only here for, for the one game, and Gorzolani takes the 40-man uh, roster spot vacated by Marlon Byrd. Indians take the field behind Trevor Bauer. And we'll take a look at the starting lineup that Trevor will face tonight for a very hot Texas Rangers ball club. A season high, 10 games over 500, and that man, Jerickson Profar, is leading off. Ian Desmond batting second, Prince Fielder third, Adrian Beltre, Nomar Mazzara, and Mitch Moreland. Elvis Andrews, who has four hits in the series and eight at bats, Ryan Rua, and Bobby Wilson gets his first start, and he'll bat ninth. And tonight's Northern Ohio Honda starting pitcher for the tribe will be Trevor Bauer. Bauer on. He will be making his seventh start of the year, three and two record, 4.34 ERA, coming off a start against the Baltimore Orioles where. He struggled in the first inning, gave up three runs. He had a chance to get out of it, but gave up a two out base hit. It settled down after that. He ended up going six and only allowed those three runs. They were able to tie it. He had a no decision. So he's going to want to put that out of his mind and put zeros on the board until the Indians can get the lead because every game they've lost on this homestand, they fell behind early and in, in the first inning. So we'll see if he can put a zero on the board and we'll start from there. Let's set the defense behind him, which is brought to you by Jeep. It looks like this. It'll be Ramirez in left, Davis in center, Chisholm Hall over in right, Uribe at third, Lindor is a short, Kipnis at second, Napoli at first, Jimenez is behind the dish tonight. Trip Gibson has the plate. The crew chief Hunter Wendelstad is at first base, Manny Gonzalez at second, and Gabe Morales is down at third. Defensively for the Indians, Carlos Santana is in the lineup at first base, and Mike Napoli is now the DH. Don't know if that was a change or if the lineup that we received was incorrect, but that's the way they line up here tonight. Trevor Bauer ready to go against Jerickson Profar.
72 degrees, our game time temperature. Just a few stray clouds overhead, but otherwise just delightful. Profar taking all the way. That's in there for a strike. Profar up here filling in for Brugnet or Odor, who is uh, serving his suspension, a seven game suspension. Again, ropes one into the right field corner. Profar on his way to second base, and he'll go in standing with a leadoff double. Uh, well, Four out of the five games he has played, he has let off the game with a with a hit. Yesterday was the only time he did not. And he gets the uh, count in his favor. It looked like a changeup by Bauer that he's able to turn on. He hit the, the changeup home run off Kluber last night. He drills this one into the corner. So Texas back off and starting well in the first. Ian Desmond to the plate. Desmond has gone three for nine in the series with a pair of doubles and a home run. Hits it on to the right side. Kipnis will flag it down and throw him out. Profar moves to third with one away. Well, it looked like he was trying to go to that right side with that whole uh, swing, the way he approached it, got the job done. He watched. He was trying to hit the hole between first and second. He waited on that fastball that was coming in, a little two-seamer. But you can see the approach, get him over, and now it's up to Fielder to try and get him in. Prince Fielder has gone one for eight in the series. And with regards to that get him in theory in his eight at bats Rick only one time has he gotten the ball beyond the infield and that was the one time he got a hit none of his outs have been beyond the infield level. They stayed tight that pitch. They didn't want to give him any swing and room. And that ball was bounced. camouflaged. It was right on the plate. <laughs> yes, it was. If you're Jimenez. looking straight down, you can't see it. <laughs> he couldn't. That's what he's laughing about there. How often do you see a hitter pointing? It's right here. Yeah. <laughs> Been pretty good in these situations to this point. 10 out of 15. Not this time, though, I don't think. Wow, Ramirez, a long run. He won't get there, will yes. he? Yes. Yes, he does. Tagging, trying to come home. His pro far in the throw off line, and he's going to score. I don't know if he got a late jump or what, but he, it took him a while to get in here, although he's probably playing him very deep. I have to see where he started, but that's a good job by pro far. You end up getting a sacrifice fly. Here he comes. He's running in. You have to assume that he's going to sag up, and he tried to make the oh, throw on the yeah, run. He never got anything That's on. That's like an infielder's throw. You know, you have to really stop and plan if you're going to try and throw it. But he started. He was very deep, but had a long run to get to this ball. He gets there, and yeah, that not accurate. Not going to get him. That's a heads-up play by Profar. So they'll take a one-nothing lead. They're going to peel at third base. Home plate umpire said no, he was there. Everything's okay. Challenge it. So how'd you like that for a sacrifice fly? Nice if you can get it, right? Yeah. I guess. You see, he's gonna run and you know you have to think he's gonna tag up. And I know he had a long run, and he's not really an outfielder, so it's, it's all new for him. Yeah, that's, that's a different play. That's a weird play. But you have to gather yourself and maybe try that crow hop and make an accurate throw. Yeah. Not a throw on the run. That was an infielder's throw. 
That was a throw. It almost looked like, let me just get rid of it quickly. Maybe he won't go. Right. Right. Thinking that he won't. No. Look, he's working out there. He works out there every day, but he's not a, a left fielder. And the one two. Just a bit outside. Well, he looked like, and so did the rest of this infield, look like they were making a move to the dugout. Wow, that's. <laughs> Everybody took that half step. Curveball, and Beltre went down to a knee and somehow got a piece of the ball and stays alive. Yeah, we have seen him. That was a little too high to go to one night. He had to wait if he was going to hit it. Up the middle, Kipnis makes the play on the tricky hop, but a good backhand play by Santana to end the inning. But the Rangers score first again. One nothing, Texas. The Indians are coming to bat. Starting lineup for Terry Francona tonight brought to you by Progressive. Rajay Davis leading it off. Jason Kipnis bat second. Francisco Lindor hitting third. Mike Napoli, who homered in the series, will hit cleanup. Then it's Carlos Santana. Jose Ramirez with three hits and has scored twice will bat sixth. Juan Uribe, Lonnie Chisenhall, and Chris Jimenez batting ninth. Cole Hamill's first pitch is in there for a strike. Cole Hamels has given up 12 home runs. Four of the home runs he has allowed have come on the first 15 pitches that he has thrown in a ball game. So, like a lot of pitchers, if you're going to get him, get him early. Well, let's check out uh, the Northern Ohio Hyundai starting pitcher, Cole Hamels, the 32-year-old left-hander, his 11th start this year, five and one. And in his last start, he took the loss. It was a nine-to-one defeat against the Pittsburgh. Pirates snapped a career high 12 game winning streak for him. But Hamels is 3 and 0 on the road this year 163 ERA and in his career against the Indians 0 and 2 in two starts. So they've been able to handle him both times they faced him. A little bit low ball one to Jason Kipnis. I did watch a little bit of that game he pitched against Pittsburgh and Pittsburgh really had a good approach against Hamels. Right handers trying to take him the other way staying on that change up and uh, they had a lot of success. Within those first 15 pitches that he has thrown this year in a ball game. Giving up a total of nine hits, so five singles and four home runs. Yeah, he's a guy though. Twelve homers given up on the year, ten of them. 
have been solo. The 3 1. And that's low, ball four. Let's check out the uh, Rangers defense behind Hamels tonight. It looks like this. Brewer is in left field, Desmond in center. Mazzara in right, Beltre at third, Andrus at short, Profar is at second, Moreland at first, Wilson doing the catching. Francisco Lindor hitless in the series. Takes a first pitch strike. in front of the plate. You can see that 400 batting average from this side of the plate for Lindor is fourth best in the league trailing only Bogarts Kinsler and Bradley. Low two balls and a strike. Hitters have been able to put this pitch in play against Hamels. A lot of success. They five for 14. And Lindor lifts it to right, but can't sting it. Can't do anything with it. Just an easy out, two down. Keys to the game brought to you by Wayside Furniture. Jump out early. Well, the Rangers have already scored first, so the the key for the Indians is to try to get that magic number four. When they score four or more, they've gone 24. And six. And I like that think the other way with Hamels. He has a very good changeup. And, uh, you know, he may go with that fastball a lot through that first time through the lineup. He's got a breaking ball as well. Napoli, a big swing and a miss. So in one. Drives it deep left field. That's going to the cheap seats. Mike Napoli with a boomy two out, two run homer puts the Indians on top two to one. As he belts his 12th home run of the year and his second in the series. And just like that, the Indians come right back and answer in the bottom of the first inning. Well, the big man, Mike Napoli, got another pitch down in his zone that he likes. Pitch number 13. There it is. It looked like a, I don't know if that was a fastball or not, but it was. It was down in his zone, and Knapp likes it down there, and he turns it around and gives the Indians a lead now, two to one. So that's now five home runs allowed by Napoli within the first 15 pitches of a game as Mike Napoli dials long distance. Here in the opening frame. Boy, did they need that in a big way. Tap foul, third base side. You know, we always talk about that first inning being a vulnerable spot for a starting pitcher. I never really thought about it in terms of the pitch count. But you know if you think about that you know how many pitches it might take a guy to find his rhythm get into his groove makes a lot of sense. Oh ho, ho, my. Hamels just threw his glove out and Rob Santana of a potential hit to end the inning. Big Mike Napoli going deep in the opening frame and the Indians have a two to one lead.
is live with the MLB.com at Bad App. Stay connected all season with road broadcasts, video highlights, stats, news, and more. Download MLB.com at Bat, the number one app for live baseball on your smartphone and tablet. Trevor Bauer with the first pitch strike to Nomar Mazzara. Mazzara with a three run homer in the series opener. It's the only hit he's had though. But that was a big one in that opening frame. Or opening uh, game of the series. Popped him up foul back out of play. Well if he would have chopped that home run up into about he might have had about four or five hits in the series as long as that one was. Yes he did. Third base umpire Gabe Morales agrees and Trevor Bauer has a strikeout one down. Good curveball. He came back and he expanded his zone got him to chase after it down in front of the plate. Nice pick there by Jimenez. So Bauer gets his first strikeout. Big to get that leadoff man because the Rangers leadoff hitters have done some damage They're 10 for 19 in the series with seven runs scored when they're leading off an inning. Yeah. Here's Mitch Moreland. Took the sting out of his bat, had him off balance, and Juan Uribe backing up will make the catch two down. Injury report brought to you by the attorneys at Elk and Elk around the American League. Miguel Sano blew out a hamstring going down the line out of the batter's box. He's on the DL. So is Danny Santana for the Minnesota Twins, as if things couldn't get much worse for that ball club. Minnesota began the day 15 and 36 in the last check we're losing to Oakland. I don't know if that game's gone final yet. I believe it has. It is indeed a final and that leaves Minnesota with the worst record in baseball currently by a half game over Atlanta. Andrus checks on a ball in the dirt. Two down here in the second inning. And a one one count for Elvis Andrus. And he takes a breaking ball for a strike. White Sox beat the Mets earlier today two to one Chicago began the day a half game better than the Indians in the American League Central Division so they'll stay in front of the tribe regardless. Kansas City owning the top spot in the AL Central coming into play today with a five game win streak. Andrus out looking Bauer strikes out a pair. Texas goes one, two, three. Indians lead it two to one.
Rangers will lead off the second inning. The home half for Cleveland, they lead it two to one. Cole Hamels misses outside, ball one. Foul off to the on deck circle. Toward first. Moreland with the flip. One away. Our stat of the game is brought to you by Buick. Cole Hamels has made 22, 22 starts with the Rangers. And they have fared very well. The team record 17 and 5 when he's on the mound. I told you it was his second loss in his last start. Against Pittsburgh, but he's been pretty reliable since they acquired him from Philadelphia. Juan Uribe, two for four in the series, takes, and that's a call strike. Two. Rebe appears to be very comfortable in his new environment here in Cleveland. Batting 290 at home as opposed to 209 on the road. Now, the difference between 209 and 290 seems so vast. But when you look at the numbers, it's yeah. a difference of four hits. Well, that's true. It's early in the year. When you go out, if you were to have a good series in a road town, that batting average could be right back up there in a hurry. That's why sometimes it's it's a little skewed. Yeah. You know, and there's times where he's hit balls right on the nose here, that uh, and on the road where he could be hitting better. Like that. <laughs> Deep to center, but it's going to die in the middle of the warning track where Ian Desmond grabs it two away. Our great clip of the game from yesterday comes from Lonnie Chisenhall. With three hits, including a big home run that got the Indians back in it. In all, he's four for five in the series. And you have to hope that that is the kind of jump start that he needed that will really get him onto a tear because the Indians desperately need some help offensively from that outfield position. Rajay's done a nice job. Jose Ramirez has filled in admirably. But, you know, with Michael Brantley still on the mend, well, that's the big question mark. When will Michael be ready to go? Fouled right back. You know, here we are. We're starting June, June 1st. And still, we, we're not sure when. Fastball and he missed inside with it. Good eye by Lonnie and he I don't know Rick if he's just seeing the ball better now but he seems to be a little more patient at the plate not chasing as many bad balls. Yeah, you can tell by the way a hitter takes pitches he took a couple of close ones down and in right there off the left hander and didn't offer at him. You know, you think about it, and it was the other day, I believe it was against Baltimore, he went head first into second base, kind of slammed his head into the, the leg of, I think it was, might have been Manny Machado. 
for Jonathan Scope and kind of knocked him out with some blurred vision. But since he's come back from that, he's been pretty good at the plate. And a broken bat line, a short hop by the second baseman, Profar. And he'll throw him out. The Indians go one, two, three. He's played two in Cleveland. It's the Indians two and the Rangers one. Later in the game for Miller time, brought to you by Miller Lite. Ryan Rua leading off for Texas. And the pitch is up and away, ball one. One of three Ohioans on this Rangers roster, Ryan Roy, out of Amherst, Ohio, played collegiately at Lake Erie College. He was a 17th round pick back in 2011. First Lake Erie College product ever drafted. Well, has to be a fun time for him coming to the ballpark here in Cleveland and playing in a big league game. Smash toward short. Lindor goes to a knee, dives down and makes the catch and throws him out. One away. See how quickly Lindor popped up. It's almost like a pop up slide and turned the other way and got rid of it. Stop. It was just like a little pop up slide. He came up quickly and had plenty of time, but he was thinking of that move before he even caught the ball, what he was going to do with it. Yeah. Say, I watched the Lindor after he made the play with that mouth guard. Everybody in the NBA's got a mouth guard now, yeah. too. <laughs> That's all you see is those guys that things in and out, in and out the whole game. Unless you're Steph Curry, then you shoot free throws with it dangling out of your mouth. I got a couple coming for us over the weekend. We're going to have them too. <laughs> Did you say mouth guards or muzzles for us? <laughs> mouth guards. Bobby Wilson looks at a ball down low. Texas catcher getting his first action in the series. Holiday and Bobby Wilson have done a very good job with the catching duties. Yes, they have, especially in the absence of Robinson Chirinos. Out of play. Well, the Rangers, they've won four straight, six of their last seven, but Houston's won four straight, and now Oakland with a win today. They've won five straight. 
And everybody in the Western Division has won for the last two straight days. Oh, that's the second time today that Bowers had a ball literally just off the outside corner. Take a look at it on our Nissan pitch tracker. Starts off the edge and just stays right there. Ends up walking the number nine hitter, Wilson. It's only the second base runner for Texas in the game. Well, today's uh, your last chance to enjoy a fee free access presented by Cleveland Clinic for games this weekend against the Kansas City Royals. The games are June 3rd, 4th, and 5th. You won't have any ticketing fees. Visit Indians.com for more details. Here is Jerickson Profar who led off the game with a double and scored the Rangers lone run. He takes high ball one. Cut through a slider, I think. Well, you're going to see it. It's upstairs. You see that little zone inside above the belt. Just couldn't get the barrel out of the bat out in front to it. Now the one, two. And that's lined in the right center. That is a gap shot, but Rajay cuts it off. On his way to third is Wilson. And the Rangers have runners at the corners with one out as Profar has his second hit of the game already. Yeah, that, that the slider before it had it in the right spot and he comes back with the fastball, but he's not going to sneak this one by him. He gets to this ball and it wasn't, it was down a little bit and it was a little more swinging room out over the plate and hit it into right center field that allowed Wilson to get to third. So they will have runners at the corners now and a chance to tie the game. Desmond. This is his first year in an organization other than the one he was drafted by. Well, that's the scary thing. He swung the bat very well and he's been aggressive in this series. Think about when he gets used to this league, if he stays in it and gets an idea what these pitchers are like, gets a little book on him. He, he can swing it, he attacks the baseball. Chopper up the middle. Lindor has it. Kicks the bag, throws the first, not in time, and the game is tied. The yes. ball just took him too far away from second base to be able to turn. Yeah, it. you know what? And he had to come back at step. It was like an extra half a step away where he just couldn't step on it and throw. And that enabled uh, Desmond to beat it out. You see that one step, he's sliding, finally gets to it. And there you can see he beats it out and ties the ball game. So give Desmond his 33rd RBI on the year. Throw 
Nice play as Desmond just did get back. Definitely going to keep an eye on Desmond, who leads the club with 10 stolen bases. Actually, doesn't have the lead. He's got the lead here. That's, uh, well, it would help if I was looking at the right team. He does have the team lead with 10. Not going. Fielder takes high. Ball one. I was thinking about Ian Desmond when he came up, Rick. He was drafted in 2004 by the Montreal Expos. I think that was their last year before they moved to Washington. But you know, to spend your whole career, yeah, you know, a dozen years almost uh, in the same organization, and now find yourself without a home. Not that it wasn't his own doing, as you pointed uh, out. Yeah. They made him a really nice offer, and he they said, sure no, did. thank you. That's what I was going to say. He could have probably stayed there his whole career had he signed the deal. Yeah. What did you say, seven years? Seven year, 107 million. Yeah, I don't think there's any doubt that would have. That would have, you know, cemented him in that organization, I would think, forever. Fielder tees off deep right, but not deep enough. Lonnie Chisenhall will make the catch, and that will end the inning. But Texas comes back and ties it 2 2, middle of the third. Make more than a few trips to the concession stand tonight. <laughs> yeah, until they're sleeping. Mom's got her hands full. Well, we go to the bottom of the third, a 2 2 ball game. Chris Jimenez will lead it off for Cleveland. His old club, Jimenez sends one foul on the right side. And he 
he's going to punch out here looking one down. Let's go down to Andre. Obviously a disappointing day for the Indians. Uh, Marlon Bird suspended uh, for the rest of the season. And so what does that do with the outfield rotation as of now? Well, for Terry Francona, he's looked at it as he's had a, you know, a nice rotation of guys to play out in the outfield right now. Lonnie Chisendall swinging the bat well. He says against certain lefties, maybe this will get Lonnie going against them because he's going to play some more early on. And whenever Michael Brantley comes back, this may give room for Jose Ramirez to continue playing the outfield. At this point, they have not looked at the trade situation because this happened so quickly. Also, Chris Antonetti and the guys have been looking at the draft. They had draft meetings today, so they haven't really had a chance to look to see what's out there. But maybe that comes up after a couple more weeks if things don't change with some of the production. Yeah, what's the draft? June 9th? Coming up uh, in about a week. Yeah. Well, you, you got the guys here. You got you. You play who you have right now. Get up, getting out in front. Might have been a change up there. Wasn't, didn't see the velocity on that pitch. But he was way out in front. Down on the dirt. That foul. Again, Rajai seeing a steady diet of changeups. Two two is a little bit wide of the mark. Showed him a fastball. Two two comes back on the three two with another changeup. He's not giving in here. Good pitch just to follow it off. It was down in the zone. That was a pretty good pitch and a good job to follow it off. And ground ball rolls it to short. Andrews throws him out two down. Here's our quick and loans rocket arms and the Texas Rangers starters over their last 11 games nine and two with a 258 ERA. That's how you get on a roll and get the 10 games over 500. Yeah. Especially with the offense that they have. Well, their starters in the American League are leading the league. They're 22 and 10 with a 338 for the season. You mentioned about their issues and the problems that they have had out of the bullpen. They have some injuries and. They have uh, been playing well. It's they were not 10 games over at the 500 mark until last September. September 15th when they were 77 and uh, 67.
Jason Kipnis down swinging, and the Indians go one, two, three. Since the Napoli homer, Hamels has retired seven straight. Fourth inning, and Adrian Beltre will lead it off for the Rangers. <laughs> and Beltre takes a strike on the outside edge. That's a pitch that uh, these two, between Jimenez and Bauer, they've been throwing a lot. That changeup, not afraid to use it. First pitch, he just doubled up there. The sixth straight time that Jimenez has caught Trevor Bauer in a start. Up and in, and the count now three balls and a strike. Fastball right at the knees. Yeah, not so fast, Beltre. Yeah, beautifully located at the knees, outside edge. It's perfect. Just a perfect pitch right there. That was a little high and inside. Second walk issued by Bauer. And the Rangers get their leadoff man aboard for the second time tonight. T Mobile game changer. Greater coverage of baseball. Betts. Three home runs from the leadoff spot. And he's Ranger are the uh, Red Sox got some hitters. Boy, do they oh. ever. Yes, they do. You look at it in the in the top ten and the hitting streaks that are that they've had. It's gonna be a tough play. Lindor with a great diving stop goes to second. They'll get the force there on Beltre. Outstanding play by Lindor just to keep that on the infield. Then he robs Mazzara of a hit by forcing Beltre at second for the first out of the inning. Yeah, nicely done going into the hole to his right. He realizes he's only going to get one. But he had plenty enough time. You had Beltre running. Gets it over to Kipnis. They get the lead runner. Nice play. Especially with that leadoff walk. Now Mitch Moreland who popped up 
On the infield is only time up. It's going to sail high. One ball, one strike. It's about the third or fourth guy that has called timeout when Bowers get ready to get into the stretch. Center field. Rajay coming in and over toward left. Two away. Well, you can bring the heat this weekend. The Kansas City Royals will be in town, and on Friday you can enjoy dollar dogs, two dollar Miller light cans, fireworks, and a Subway sunglasses. And on Saturday, 12,500 fans will get a 76 throwback jersey, post game fireworks, and also pay tribute to the late David Bowie, Glenn Fry. And Prince, visit Indians.com for your tickets. Elvis Andrus was out on strikes his only time up in the second inning and he smashes one just foul Third base side. Little bit low. One ball, one strike. Two out here in the fourth. Trevor Bauer just shy of 60 pitches. Puts Andrus in the hole one and two. He got him looking his first time up. Oh, almost had him chasing, but he was able to hold up two and two. Yeah, good curveball. That's what you want to do. See if he'll go out there and chase a pitch. He thought about it, but was able to hold up. Mazzara takes off on the 2 2, and Andrus swings and misses to end the inning. We'll head to the bottom half of the fourth. It's Cleveland 2 and Texas 2.
Setting in Francisco Lindor, Mike Napoli, and Carlos Santana do up for the Indians. Up the middle, but cut off by the second baseman Profar, and Lindor retired, one away. Down to Andre. What do you got on Mike Napoli? Well, you know, we all know he's a former catcher, and we talk all the time about thinking through the process. And he says and tells me sometimes I just overthink it when I'm at the plate. It goes back to being a catcher. So he goes, you know what? When I'm hitting best, I stop thinking and just react. But he says he's always has that catcher's mindset with him, and it'll never go away. And he thinks about it when he's playing defense. And when he's hitting, but he's told himself, when I'm in the box, stop being a catcher. Just hit. Yeah, isn't that the truth? Sometimes, you know, you just go up there and see and react, and good things can happen. Well, since uh, he hit his home run back in the first, Cole Hamels has really settled down. He's thrown 39 pitches, 29 strikes, and retired the last eight. So he's been on fire since that ball Napoli hit out of here. That was the 13th home run that uh, Hamels has allowed. Only the third with somebody on base. He had 10 solo shots. Between pitches 46 and 60, he's allowed three home runs. So you figure that's like that second time through the order. You get kind of the middle guys like Napoli do up. And then the other weak spot he has. Like a lot of pitchers, I'm sure, pitches 76 to 90 when you're just kind of maybe starting to run out of gas at the end. Yeah. Or they've seen you a couple times and maybe sit on a pitch and get it. Napoli strikes out. That's three K's now for Cole Hamels, our Yellowwood bringing the lumber. Let's go back to that home run he hit in first. Well, and that was a, a big deal because they were just on the board, scored one. And uh, the Indians come right back and respond. They put two on the board in the first, and they took the momentum back. But it's pitchers have been dealing since, really. Santana swings over the top. Just missed inside. Yeah, but you notice when he misses, he's missing in off the plate. And that could be effective to make him look in there and go back away. He had he had the change up down and away. He had him reaching for it. A little Same bit pitch. Low. Is a strike on the outside part of the plate, so he's in and out. And he's been inside and outside with both pitches. The fastball that which that was right there. That's in the dirt, and that's the second walk issued by Hamels with two outs here in the fourth inning to bring up Jose Ramirez. Jose Ramirez a ground out his first time up. The Indians finished up the month of May at 16 and 13. The shame of it is they were on a really good run before dropping four out of five to close out the month. Texas finishing the month of May 17 and 11. Yeah, they did that. Seattle did that. So did Kansas City. Those three teams are 17 and 11 in the month of May. But now we get to June. Turn the page. June 1st. Weather starting to heat up. The 2-0 pitch. A little bit outside. 
And after this home stand, the Indians will make their first West Coast swing. Heading out to Seattle, L.A., finish it off in Kansas City. Well, Jose Ramirez draws a walk, and the Indians have two on now with two out. For Juan Arribe and Doug Brokale, the pitching coach on the on the hop, he's headed to the mound. Well, um, Santana he made a pretty good at bat, you know, full count, and he walked him. But that the four straight to Ramirez. Arch, as you know, the greatest golfers in the world converge on the historic Oakmont Country Club this month, the 116th U.S. Open Championship. Live coverage begins Thursday, June 16th on FS1. It'll continue through the final round on Sunday, June 19th on Fox. Or you can watch the entire tournament live on Fox Sports Go. Yeah, a trophy here today. Did you, ever, did you ever play Oakmont? Okay. No. I know you get to Pittsburgh occasionally. Yeah, I've, I've heard it's a phenomenal course. Tight, old school, long, rough, a lot of trees. No, I don't think there's any water to speak of. I know at one time I heard stories that Mario Lemieux was a single digit handicapped member at Oakmont. Oh, yeah. Well, it doesn't surprise you, does he, the way he played hockey? No. Some of those hockey players are tremendous golfers. Arebe with a mighty hack, but he came up empty. And it is one and one. Popped him up. This might be playable here. Moreland over to the seats. No, sir. And no, sir, for you. Right. It hit him in the hands, but there you go. I think family member got it. Got so it. Nice. Yeah. He's got a t shirt and a ball. Yeah, well, it's a pretty that, good day. Yes, it is. It's a very good day. Made her day a lot of fun coming to the ballpark tonight. All smiles. He's got the oh, bruise. Oh, She's let's ice it down. <laughs> He's going to ice it down with a cold one. Here's the one, two, and Arebe lifts it in the air. Right center, routine for Mazzara. And Hamels gets out of trouble. Two stranded. After four, we're tied at two. Cleveland Indians baseball is brought to you by Levin Furniture for the best deals on furniture and mattresses. Shop Levin's. By your Northern Ohio Honda dealers. And by the Cleveland Clinic. Access anytime, anywhere. Two, two, fifth inning. Way, 
March. I don't know if they had a rain delay in Baltimore or just a little bit later start. Oh yeah, because we start an hour early. Right. Mookie bets Homer to lead off the game. Did he? Oh, after three, after three yesterday. <laughs> Boy, you get so used to these six o'clock starts, you forget we're. Well, it's our last yeah, one of the year. I That's. Know. They're over. The one-one to Ryan Ruit. Man, it's a little bit high. Two and one. bit low and so now a full count strike three call Bauer rings him up fourth strikeout for Trevor Bauer he's made some pretty good pitches down there See where Rua might have yeah. had. Yeah, uh, you know what? He's he's thrown better pitches that weren't called tonight than that one, but that one's called, yeah, which is a good thing because that would have been a leadoff walk. Bobby Wilson walked. His only time up, buckled by that breaking ball, but it's a little bit high. Yeah, but both the runs so far from the Rangers haven't come on a base hit. He had to sacrifice fly in the first and a ground out fielder's choice in the third. Two oh line drive right out of Rajay Davis. Two away. All right, we want to send uh, Bill and Rita Gorensic congratulations. They're from Brooklyn. 59th anniversary they are celebrating. And congratulations to Fabiola and Matt Cole on the birth of their first child this morning. Miles Cole was born. So congratulations to yes, the Coles. Indeed. That one got the umpire. As Jimenez will take a stroll as he'll have a chance to catch his breath. Indians Rangers bid adieu after tonight for a while. Indians will visit Texas later this summer. We go in there in August, don't we? Big four games. Yeah, late four August. Games. Yes. School just ended. School will be back in session when we go to Texas, though. Okay. Think about that. And uh, of course, the Indians will welcome in the Kansas City Royals for four gamer starting tomorrow night. Fans encouraged to rock the red this weekend, bring the heat against Kansas City. The world champs uh, will be in town. Should be a lot of fun. Big series, even though there's still a ton of baseball left. The old, the old guard used to say pennant races don't begin until June. You play your first two months, kind of feel things out, and now it's like okay. We know well, sort of where we stand. We know where everybody else is at. We know what we have well, to do. It's time to go now. This will be the second trip that Kansas City has made to Cleveland. We have yet to go to Kansas City. All ours will be, what, after the All-Star break, I believe. No, I, I, the end of this, end road, of this trip. road trip. Yeah, will be our first stop there. Yeah, the next two months will definitely tell a lot about how this season's going to go for a lot of teams in the Central Division. Well, tomorrow night, Carlos Carrasco back on the hill. Yeah. And it's been a while. Yes, they do. It's been about, what, five weeks. All right. So Carrasco will return. The Royals are, are back in first place in the AL Central. Will they stay there? Who knows? You know, they're not exactly at 100% without Sal Perez. They're missing their third baseman, Mustakas. They're missing Gordon Alex Gordon. Yeah. Yeah, but the division is so closely bunched together outside of Minnesota. The other four teams, you know what? What do you got? The five games separate the other four teams in the division. 
and it was closer than that until Detroit lost four in a row. Tigers just underway out in Anaheim. 2 0 pitch at the knees, a strike. Back. Profar doubled and scored in the first. And he singled in the third inning. That led to the second run of the game for the Rangers because he pushed Bobby Wilson to third base. He would score on a fielder's choice by Ian Desmond. But Bauer's done a nice job. The 2 2. Chop foul. Deals a curveball, or maybe just another slider that just—he's got a, a pretty good pitch when he keeps it up out of the hitting area. Profar swings through it, inning over. Ball game, bottom of the fifth inning. And for Cleveland, Lonnie Chisinau, Chris Jimenez, and Rajay Davis do up. Cole Hamels has allowed one hit. That one hit left the yard for a two run homer in the first. Lonnie Chisinau following that first pitch off. He was trying to get out and get after it. Back and a count quickly 0 and 2. Rick, can you explain the difference? Not that he's any easier to hit. But for a left handed hitter facing a Cole Hamels versus say a Chris Sale. Oh boy. You know the arms the legs the, the where the ball's coming from may be tougher to pick up from Sale. Cole Hamels pretty much over the top. Roll the first Moreland will flip it. So you pick up the ball you I see think, it a little yeah, better. I think you would see it from Cole Hamels. Yeah. A lot easier than you would see it from Chris Sale. But this guy. Good control. He moves it around. He, he knows how to pitch. Never gives in like most good starters. 
He's walked 20, 26 on the year, but he struck out 70. If a lefty's got a, one of those big sweeping side to side breaking balls, is that tougher for a left hander yeah, than, I mean, say, a uh, traditional wait, over the top wait, hook? Wait, yeah. Yes, it is. I look at Hamels. I think Hamels throws that like knuckle curve. Yeah. That goes straight down. More like a Cliff Lee. Yes, right, like Cliff Lee does. And there's some sliders that Chris Sale throws. You don't even think they're strikes when you see them. You know, it comes in and it looks like it, it wraps around the plate by the time the catcher gets it. And then it chops that foul. And a one ball, two strike count for Chris Jimenez. He's showing everybody the ball. Yeah. Just missed inside. Took a little something off and had Jimenez out in front. Four strikeouts now for Cole Hamels. Two down and our in-game recap brought to you by your local Toyota dealers. First inning, this is a sack fly. He didn't really hit it that much, but it was just perfectly placed. And the Rangers took the lead, but in the bottom of the first, Mike Napoli with a two-run homer to put the Indians in front. And then on a fielder's choice, Lindor just couldn't quite turn the double play, and that enabled the Rangers to tie it up, and that's where we stand. Yeah, that's uh, amazing. The, the Indians with one hit have scored both their runs. Remember, well, the Yankees just won a game getting one hit. They beat uh, Tampa Bay. That's right. Uh, with one hit, two to one. The guy had a no-hitter for a while. He only right. hit, gave up all game. Grab barehand grab and it's close but Davis going to beat it out of first base. Moreland was trying to dig it out. Andrus made a terrific play to even make it close. Yeah he did. And even if Moreland picks it they may have had him but you know the speed of Davis going down the line forces that defender. He knows he can't let it go into his glove. He feels it clean and that had a lot of spin to it. But he throws it. No he would have been safe anyway so it didn't matter. So that's the second hit for the tribe. Never really had a good grip because I think that ball was spinning when he went to catch it. He knew he had to get rid of it in a hurry because of the speed of Davis. So a two out single here in the fifth. See if Rajay has any kind of read on Hamill's move, if he can unnerve him a little bit. Well, you can bet on this. If he can pick anything up, he, he'll be off and running. You know that. There. Oh, I thought he was going. He almost had him timed. Yep. You know, he took off and then he thought he was going to come to first base, so he stopped. That was a double hit, wasn't he it? He sure did. He hit it twice. Strike two. One, two. <laughs> There it is. That's a one two count. Opposition four for five in stealing bases against Hamill. So I think he will take off. Rajay is 11 out of 14 on the year. And if I remember right one of those was a play at third base in which it looked like he was safe. Yeah. They got cold, yes. No? You know what he was. That was the first time he was caught all year and he was actually safe. No. He's been very good. <laughs> yeah he's talking to Sandy over there at that time he sort of. Used a slide step on him. And right now, Hamill's just concentrating on the hitter with two strikes. 
Didn't have to worry about him as much. Kipnis yanks one right field near the line. Fair ball. Up against the bullpen. That's going to enable Rajay to come all the way around and score as Kipnis goes into second base with a two out RBI double. And Cleveland leads it three to two on the 29th run batted end of the year for Jason Kipnis. Well, doing it with two outs. He brought the hands in nicely. It looked like he tried to tie him up inside. And. This is going to be our AT&T high speed replay. Pulls the hands in and keeps it fair down the line. Davis was off and running, so he's going to score easily. All this coming with two outs. And they retake the lead. It's three to two now. Kipnis with his 29th RBI and his ninth double. Lindor shoots it to third. Beltre will have a routine play, and the inning is over. But Jason Kipnis delivers a clutch hit here in the fifth, and the Indians go back in front, three to two. I'll catch up inadvertently. <laughs> First he goes deep. Then he plays a hand and who wins the hot dog race. <laughs> he screened him. That's an offensive foul. <laughs> Trevor Bauer has the lead and Ian Desmond. Will be at the plate. Desmond moved a runner over in his first at bat. He was able to come around to score. In his second at bat, he drove in the run on a ground out up the middle. Almost a double play, but Lindor couldn't get back to second, so he was credited with an RBI. That's the only two runs that Texas has today. Close ones that seem to all go the hitter's way tonight. Well, that was about the same pitch that he called on uh, Roa. Except the one to Ryan Roa. Yeah, yeah la went. last inning, a 3 2 pitch. Has been hacking full count. One of the best compliments everyone ever gave Ian Desmond came from Frank Robinson. And the fact that it came from Frank Robinson in and of itself is pretty good. 
Maybe it's because Frank mellowed in his later years. He wasn't probably prone to giving compliments when he managed you in the mid 70s. But when he when he was around Ian Desmond for the first time, he said I, he has better instincts than guys I've seen who have played for 20 years. He's not overwhelmed by situations. He doesn't panic. And when you ask him a question, he gives you a quick answer. He doesn't stare at you and say, mm, let me think about yeah, that for right. a minute. That was one of the things that really impressed Robinson about Desmond as he takes the walk to open up the sixth inning for the Nationals. Now the play for Texas. Number 84. Now here's Prince Fielder. Safe. It was very close. You could see even Desmond sort of exhaling as this to say, "Yeah, he thought he had him out there." And by the time Jimenez could get the ball back, he was able to get his hand back to the base. You know, he thought it was going into the dirt, and then he says, "Uh oh, I better get back." And he goes to the far side of the bag where Santana has to really grab it and then come back and try and reach him. Popped him up. Out goes Lindor, and he'll make the grab one away. Baseball returns Saturday with a game you can only see on FS1 when the Rays take on the Twins at 3.30 Eastern. Then it's Baseball Night in America. Indians Royals at 7 on your local Fox affiliate, or you can watch it live on Fox Sports Go. Here is Adrian Beltre who is grounded out and he has walked. And he smacks one in the hole between third and short. Desmond stops at second base. And the Rangers have two on with one out. Well he was ready for the fastball this time. He took one in his last at bat but not this time. He got up there and got after the fastball found the hole between short and third. Only the third hit for Texas. One more birthday wish tonight to Johnny Salvo celebrating her fourth birthday. Happy birthday. Well, here is Nomar Mazzara 0 for 2. On the night. And he takes a strike. Mazarek with that big home run in the first game of the series. But it's his only hit. The Indians have held him in check. Well, he's seen five pitches tonight and five strikes from Bauer. Yesterday, Corey Kluber cost him two bats. He broke a bat his first time up, and then he got sawed off and popped one right back to the mound to Kluber in his second at bat. And then you remember later in the game, I think it was Mazzara was the one that hit that ball. It it, it landed just behind second base and. Had that funny spin to it, and Lindor made a nice play staying with it. Oh, yeah, so Throw we thought it hit second base. Yeah. The 2 1. That's hit hard. But Jose Ramirez is right there in left field. Two down. Which will leave it up to Mitch Moreland, who is 0 for 2 on the night.
Ground ball toward first. Santana has it. Long throw. Bowers there. Good accurate feed from Santana. And that ends the inning. No runs, a hit, two men left. Middle of the sixth. It's the Indians three and the Rangers two. Cleveland Lee. And the boys from the Lone Star State. We'll watch Mike Napoli lead off for Cleveland here in the bottom half of the sixth. Napoli's two run homer gave the Indians the lead in the bottom of the first. Texas tied it in the third, and the Indians went ahead on the Jason Kipnis two-out RBI double in the fifth. Chase that one up high, and... Hamels puts him away his fifth strikeout tonight. Well, it'll be dollar dogs in postgame fireworks presented by Wayside Furniture on Friday night as the Indians will take on the Royals. Plus, you can get uh, $2 Miller lights from 5 to 7 in the right field district. And 10,000 fans will get sunglasses courtesy of Subway. Santana takes it to strike at the bottom of the zone. One on one. That bouncer beats the shift. How about that? Yeah, they're playing the three over on the left side, so why not? You can see how hard, how hard you have to hit the ball, and you can still get a base hit. Orland was way off the first baseline, but it was a breaking ball. Just stay on it. It's an easy base hit for Santana. Hey, you made the mention uh, early in the game that one of our keys think the other way against Hamels for the right handed hitters, especially. It's a good approach. Well, I know what, that's what the, the Pittsburgh Pirates did when they faced him in his last start. He went the shortest start. Since he's been a Texas Ranger, they had a very nice, but you know, they'd faced him before. You know, being in the National League. Jose Ramirez yanks one deep left. That's off the wall. Played perfectly, though, by Rua, although he did fumble it. 
Stopping at third is Santana. Into second is Ramirez. I think if he doesn't fumble that ball, he'll hold Ramirez and keep the double play in check. It looked initially as though he was in perfect position to take the carom, but that one little bobble cost him. Yeah, he, he was in the right area, but that ball got up in him and, and it sort of jammed him in his chest. And I think Ramirez was going no matter what. Well, now the Indians in a good spot to extend the lead with one out. Juan Arebe at the plate. Bullpen getting busy for Texas. And Oribe is fly deep to center. He's fly to right. And that's all you're looking for right here. Yeah, looking for a ball up. You can uh, you can put in the outfield. And of course, Hamill's going to try to combat that. And you either get him to pop it up or hit it at somebody on the infield. And they are playing in on the grass. And he that's good. Oh, it. boy. Well, that's too bad. Waits for the high hop and throws him out. Two down. Yeah, if they were going on contact, he might have been able to make that. That ball hit high out in front of the plate, so Hamels did what he was supposed to do there. Take a look at this. This ball hitting out front. Santana, if you're going on contact, you make it. But he wasn't going on contact. Make the ball go through. So you sort of hesitate, and that's all it takes. And Lonnie Chisholm will be the batter. Chisholm 0 for 2. And it's a ball in the dirt. You know, I was talking before, Rick, about Ian Desmond, the center fielder, about how you know, he had played his whole career in the Nationals organization before. This year becoming a free agent. Cole Hamill's very similar. He was drafted in 02 out of high school by the Phillies, spent his whole career in that organization yeah. until last year when he was traded to Texas. Although I'm sure mentally he had prepared himself because there were rumors about Hamill's being traded for a long time. Yes, there was. That. Yeah. Yeah, the, the, the deadline trade, someone's gonna run a pitcher. Jason Hall cuts and misses. And at the time, little did anybody know that Hamels would turn it around and the, the, the Rangers would be in the in the playoffs. Well, remember when the trade was made, everybody was talking about this is a trade for next year and down yeah, the road. Yeah, right. And the next thing you know, they got hot. And yes, they did. And next year is now. <laughs> Big chopper should get him out of the inning. Andrews fires. And Hamels gets out of trouble. Keeps it a one run game through six. Cleveland Indians baseball is brought to you by the injury lawyers at Elk and Elk, proud partner of the Cleveland Indians. Call 1-800-ELK-OHIO. By Ford, built Ford tough. And by Subway, fresh is what we do.
Welcome back, three to two. Indians lead it here going into the top half of the seventh inning. Bauer has pitched very well this evening. Bottom third of the order for Texas. Elvis Andrews has struck out twice. By the way, I, got, I forgot to tell you, Mookie Betts did it again in the second inning. In his second. So that's five home runs in, yeah. what, how many, like six at bats, probably? Uh, like I know he had a chance to hit four. Wow. He grounded out the, his last at bat. Out of play, right side. This is Mookie Betts, too. He's. He's not a guy you think of with long ball power. He's 14 long, homers, lanky, but I think 42 yeah. ribbies. He's having some kind of start. He scored over 50 runs. I mean, you look at a guy like Bogarts. He's put together. He looks like a guy who can, you know, drive the ball and hit for some power. But that's that's bat speed. Yeah. Side. Texas only has three hits yeah. in the game. Uh, but Bowers throwing the ball very well. He's handled Andrus both times. He had him looking the first time, struck him out. The second time, had him swing at a pitch out of the zone. He really settled in. And like I said, when you go back to it, that first inning sacrifice fly, that's because Ramirez is threw it like an infielder. You know, that, that was the first run. And a ground ball scored the other run with a one out walk. They got the base hit, but they don't have a hit to drive in a run. In the air. Routine play for Lonnie Chisenhall. One down. Check out the all new Fox Sports app. You can get Major League Baseball highlights, interviews, injury updates, scores, instant alerts on your favorite teams. Just download it in the App Store, Google Play, or visit foxsports.com slash app. Here is Ryan Rua as he swings at the first pitch and sends one high in the air, deep left center, and goodbye. Ryan Rua in his return home belts a solo home run, his third of the year, and the game is tied at three. I'll tell you what, he smoked that ball. That ball hit a long way. Well, he was upset the way his last at bat ended on a called third strike that he thought was a ball. He didn't wait around this time. Let's take a look at this pitch. Well, there's one that leaked, and he gave him some swinging room. Boy, he hit it hard. Left center field ties the game with one swing of the bat. Their fourth hit. His third home run. And now Bobby Wilson, who. Walked and scored in the third, lined out the center his last time up. Out of play, right side. Texas that's their third home run of the series and they all came on the first pitch and Wilson down on strikes that's half dozen K's for Bauer two away do you think that's a is that a trend worth following the first pitch? no I don't think so I mean maybe you make a mistake on a first pitch but you know what you, you Hitters are going to get aggressive. Coming into this game, batters were successful off Trevor Bauer on first pitch. Swings that then balls put in play. Think back to a year ago with Corey Kluber and early this year, sometimes if he was going to get hurt, it was usually it was, first pitch. Yeah, they would get after him early.
right at Kipnis. And that'll end the inning. But Ryan Rua trying to ruin things for Trevor Bauer with a solo shot to the bleachers. And we're back to even at three. Stretch time in Cleveland. The Heat weekend against the Kansas City Royals. That'll continue also on Saturday. 12,500 fans will get a 76 throwback jersey. Post game fireworks will pay tribute to the late David Bowie, Glenn Fry, and Prince. Visit Indians.com for your tickets. Here is Chris Jimenez as he swings at the first pitch right at the left field of Rua. One down. <laughs> Top of the order, Rajay Davis. He's one out of three. But his infield single led to a run his last time up, and that came with two outs in that fifth inning. Cole Hamels working here in the seventh inning in a tie game and delivers a fastball high. Rajay with a liner to left and this one Rua can't get to. So Rajay singles again for the second straight at bat this time with one out. Last time up Jason Kipnis was at the plate and this happened. He swings, fouls it, and then fouls it again. And then says, get it out there. And so he did. <laughs> yeah, I uh, gave him the go-ahead run at the time, made it a three to two ball game with two outs. Now this time Davis may have an idea on Hamels with his move after being on last time. Foul out of play. Brian Shaw getting ready. Luke Jackson up in the Texas pin. Not giving him the same. 
move twice over there. Sometimes he's quick over there. Sometimes he you see the pitch before he really slowed his leg up mm -hmm. and, and went home. That time he slowed it and went back to first base. The game of cat and mouse when you're trying to hold a base stealer close. Jay's running and Kitten is swinging, but it's blooped towards center and it's going to be caught. Throwback to first. Safe. It was close, but Rajay able to beat it back and keep the inning alive. Had a pretty good jump that time as well. Had a good, oh, had a time beautifully, but he knew Kitten hit the ball, he picks it up, and he's going to scat back. He gets in there just before the throw. A lot closer than a look. So he's still at first with two down for Francisco Lindor, who is 0 for 9 in the series. Came in batting 400 on this side of the plate. Side. Oh. You know, we talked before about Cole Hamels and that that knuckle curve grip that he has, and reminiscent of Cliff Lee. Cliff, uh, I believe, officially retired. This spring. Yeah, he, he was, was going to make yep. one more comeback, but roll throw to first. Rajay's running, and I don't know if they got him or not. Ball's loose. He's safe. Well, Rajay with the speed, he just outran the play. I'm not sure even if they hold on to it if they get him. You know what? It looks like the home plate umpire called the ball. Oh, okay. He he would have beat it anyway. See, look, he, he slow played that one like he stopped. Let's see, there he is. He called the balk. You know, he was deceived. That's why he called it. He saw Davis take it off. And what he did was called. I didn't see where he was. Well, walked. you know he what? Didn't... He went up there and he was going this way. He didn't really step towards first. You know, he, he brought that leg up. Once he, he, he saw that Davis took off, he ended up going over there. And a slow chopper to short. And the end. Seven complete. Three three is our score.
telecast is presented by authority of the Cleveland Indians and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Cleveland Indians. Three, three, eighth inning. And the night is over for Trevor Bauer. No decision for the Indians right hander before you can't take away from the fact he pitched well. Bullpen yeah. takes over now. Brian Shaw. Yeah, but Bauer did. He pitched very well, settled in. It's a shame at that one home run. He let tie the game up there in the last inning in the seventh. Shaw came in and pitched in yesterday's ball game. He's going to have to go through two, three, and four. Desmond Fielder Beltrite. Swing and a miss by Ian Desmond. I mentioned Rick uh, for Cole Hamill since the start of last year when he gets three runs of support or more 17 and two. So Bauer did a heck of a job to just kind of hold them at bay. They got that third run on the board and it's a new ball game though. Yeah, they were uh, they were shaking Hamill's hand in there, so I'm sure he's done for tonight. But and of course the Indians' number, as you well know, magic number is four. When they score four or more, they're 24 and six on the year. And one shy of that at the moment. That could be a huge number for either team, depending on who gets to it first. You can't win this game with three runs. We know that. And on the year when the Indians score three or less, they've lost 18 of 20. That's a that's a tough one because it's well, hard to hold a team to two runs. Yeah, it sure is. And, uh, yeah, last night was the 20th time they had scored three or less. Shoots that one just foul first base. Well, you see, with two strikes, he's given in a little bit here. He's not going uh, trying to pull that cutter or the breaking ball from Brian Shaw. He's trying to get on base and get something started here late in the game. This game's going to be decided by the bullpens. Popped him up back towards us. And down below it drops. Swung out and missed. Ian Desmond down hacking. One away here in the eighth inning. Well, he fouled off some tough pitches and then he really slowed it down on him with the slider. Good pitch. That one out of the zone. It gets him to chase. There's Jim is showing he caught it. Fielder, a little tapper back to the mound. It's Jimenez who jumps on it and throws it out. Two away. The Red Cross Cup offers you the chance to play the legendary Canterbury Golf Club on Monday, June 13th, while supporting the Red Cross in Northeast Ohio. Visit redcross.org/neo today for information and 
to get your team signed up. Beltre with a soft liner to center field, his second hit of the night. He got jammed, but boy, this guy can hit. So they will get a two out single here. He got inside on him, and he just fights it off. Takes it to center field. That's hit number five now for Texas. Beltre with two of them. Nobar Mazzara 0 for 3. He really hit the ball hard his last time up, but he lined it to the left fielder Jose Ramirez. Outfield spread out and deep for Mazzara. And it's down low, two and zero. Oh. Jeff Bannister probably doesn't have any discipline problems with Nomar Mazzara, his father, a retired Navy general in the Dominican. <laughs> no kidding. Yeah. You wouldn't think so, would you? But Nomar said, because his dad was in the military and spent a lot of time away, he spent. A lot of time with mom growing up. And right. You know, that means mom was there looking at the swing and working. In fact, Nomar said uh, basketball was actually my true love. At 6'4, you can understand why. Yeah. But he said it was his dad who said, enough, enough with basketball, focus on baseball. <laughs> and father knows best. Aye, aye, General. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, the umpire just got nailed again. He's had a tough night oh, back that's there. That's the second time Trip Gibson has gone down behind the plate. Jeff Desjardins quickly out to attend the trip. And boy, well, he's all right. This poor guy has had a brutal night. And it's just no fun. Now, this is one of those games that's, you know, it's up in the air. The Indians have lost the first two. Yeah, it's June 1st, and there's a ton of baseball to be played. But this feels, Rick, this feels like a game they have to have. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. You, you never, ever want to get swept in a series. They've been swept one time. That was in Philadelphia when we were on the road. But you never, you know, want to get swept. you got to salvage one out of the series, and it's there for the taking. And, you know, it's late in the ball game. And, yes, you do it because you've got a, a really big weekend series coming up. Back in your division where they're playing well. Can feel good about themselves. Kind of falls under the category of uh, find a way. Yeah, to win this is one you find a way. Absolutely. Someone has to step up. Well, that young man's had a tough night back there. Yeah. They're giving him a moment to. Yeah, I mean, what? There's really nothing you can do. No. You just have to wait and hope the yeah. game subsides. You know, he'll go through the questions that the trainers will ask you, see how you feel, you know, give you some time and make sure that you're going to be okay. And if, you know, if they don't think so, they'll end up sending an umpire and, and suiting up somebody else to come in here. I know umpires, they hate to do that. But boy, sometimes you just can't help it. There's the crew chief under Wendelstead. He's looking on now because he, he would be the, probably the next to suit up. And Jeff Desjardins is. Probably explaining yeah, to them yeah. look, if, if he's. Yeah, it looks like he, he may leave. All right, they're saying he's gonna he's gonna gut it out. I'm sure, a lot of it has to do with the fact that it's not the first time he's been hit twice tonight. Same situation. Well, he's going to get a little more time because they want Shaw to throw a couple of pitches. 
He's going to walk around and just make sure. He says, I'm good. I don't know exactly know what level of good he is, but depends on what you call good. Yeah, I'm good, but I'm still in pain. Back in front, Texas tied it again. And now they bat with one on and two out in the eighth, and Nomar Mazara at the plate. And Trip Gibson is ready to go. Down in the dirt, he went. Did he go? They appeal. He is out. Yeah, he went, or he's not out, but he did go around. And now, is he hurt? Let's see. I didn't see it hit him. Oh, oh it yeah, hit him in the foot. Him in the foot. Okay. They checked. That hurts. Now he's in some pain. We may have to get stall for some time because he went. Yeah, he swung. So yes, he did. They got he help. Got so you swung at it, whether it hits you or not. You swung. So it's a strike. Back goes Beltray. Dead ball. Dead ball. He can't go to second. So now their trainer comes out to take a look at Mazzara. Boy, what a weird inning this is. No, you can't advance on a dead ball, Jeff. He's asking the umpire why Beltray has to go back, hit him in the foot, dead ball. And now Jeff's going to go look at Mazzara. Oh, it hit you in the foot? Okay. You can't argue with a man who's taken the kind of beating that Trip Gibson has had tonight. You just gotta say, okay, go back to the timeout. Well, there's only one guy left up there, and that's Geminis to get hit this at bat. Two ball, two strike count. And Mazzara with a chopper to Kipnis. He'll flip it to Lindor, and the inning is over. We move to the bottom of the eighth, 3 3 in Cleveland.
keys to the game courtesy of Mazda get out to the early lead well Mike Napoli's homer in the first gave the Indians a two to one advantage. Think the other way against Hamels. The Indians have uh, he was tough again tonight in his own way three runs on six hits they had three walks five strikeouts. Been a, it's been a well played a well pitched game and a good ball game now as we go into the eighth inning bottom half Luke Jackson on for the fourth time this year. Napoli leading off and Jackson's pitch low and away. Ball one. Napoli one out of three in the ball game. And a high fastball just missing. And had a little movement in. Well, it's a big swing there from Napoli. He tried to untie this game with one swing of the bat. Pops it up. Straight up. I mean, this is the old home run of an elevator shaft here. And a nice grab by Wilson. One away. Carlos Santana will come to the plate with a single and a walk tonight. If the Indians do not score, in this inning, then they will have to do something they haven't done yet this year in order to get a win. They're 0 and 3 when tied after eight innings so far this year. He was trying to beat the shift and kind of slam the bunt up the third base line. Instead, he slammed the foul you ball. You know, into unless Wilson. unless you really practice that, that's to me a waste of time. Now if you were to practice that and you can put it down you either bunt it or hit it hard enough you just have to push it. But you know I really I haven't seen a practice it. Yeah, I don't think those one or two bumps I mean, you take in the first uh, round. No, of batting no that, that does. You've got to really sincerely work at it if you want to try and be good at something like that and start an inning for situations like this. I'm not against it whatsoever. If you want to do it and, and you want to get on base, that's fine. But I mean, you have one out here. Hit a double. You try and hit doubles all the time. Don't, don't stop now. He pops him up. And this is playable for Belter. Two foul outs in the eighth inning for Cleaver. And now Jose Ramirez. Ramirez doubled his last time up. Big curveball, and it's in for a strike. Toward left center field, and it will get down. It will go up against the wall. And into second base with a two out double. 
is Jose Ramirez. And now the go ahead run into scoring position for Juan Arebe. Well, the second straight double for Ramirez. And boy, that's just a nice swing. That ball was upstairs. He stayed on it, drove it to left center field. Well, you give Ramirez his uh, 13th double. Now that's the go ahead run in scoring position for your rebate with two outs. Third double of the night for the Indians. Ramirez with two. Kipnis hit the RBI double back in the fifth. So he's carrying the mail out there at second base now. Base hit. Arebe's had a chance to drive in a run in each of his last two at bats. He left two on with two out of the fourth. He had second and third with one out of the sixth when he grounded out. And that pitch outside two and zero. Oh. Well, they did it in the fifth inning with uh, with two outs. Davis singled, Kipnis doubled. Right time to do it here, bottom of the eighth. the bottom of the zone for a strike barely. Tom Boschenek would like you to know that the Indians are one for their last 26 with a runner in scoring. Position. Right. One for their last 26. You see that pitch. That's not one you like. That's maybe a little low but it is called the strike. Your rebate lines it in the center field a base hit coming around third Ramirez will score the go ahead run. And down to second base goes a rebate as the Indians are up four to three as he delivers a two out clutch RBI base hit his 12th run batted in on the year and the Indians new elder statesman has a huge hit here in the eighth inning make it two for 27 now for the Indians with runners in scoring position this one comes at the right time. I'll tell you what, this throw was uh, a lot closer than I thought. I didn't think he had a chance, but Ramirez comes in, tags home plate. They lead it now, four to three. Big hit for Uribe. Now pitch running, Martinez. Close only counts some hand grades. Hand grenades and horseshoes, right? That's right. I didn't even think he was going to, the way he let that ball drop, he was even going to throw it home. I was kind of agreeing with you there. Lonnie Chisnall fouls one out of play. Lon Arebe at 37. Now the oldest member of the club, Marlon Bird, was at 38. But if you missed it earlier, he has been suspended for the remainder of the year. And real good bet his career is over. Lonnie Chisnall bounces one to first base. Moreland will go to the bag himself. And the inning is over. But the Indians come back with two down in the inning. Nobody on base. They rally to take the lead.
Thinning for the Tribe trying to get the save as the Indians just take the lead back in the bottom of the eighth along with Jensen Lewis, Al Pulowski. So the Indians trying to avoid the sweep here. And Allen's got Moreland, Andrus, and Rua coming to the plate. Well, big reason why they got this chance. The veteran guys today, Napoli, the big two-run homer, Kipnis to go ahead. And then Juan Uribe, he's now the elder statesman with Marlon Bird gone. Significant contributions for the guys they need the most. All right, join us for Indians Live after the ball game. Brought to you by Conrad's Tire Express and Total Car Care. For the ninth inning call, let's go upstairs to Matt and Rick, guys. All right, thanks, Al. A host of changes. We'll get to them when we can. Uh, right now, the first thing that's important to tell you about is Cody Allen. Trying to make it 12 out of 12 in save situations. So he's on to pitch. Jose Ramirez moves from left field to the infield. He takes over third base. Michael Martinez, who pinch ran for Juan Arriba, is now in center field. Rajay Davis moves from center field over to left field. And Jan Gomes is taken over behind the plate. Mitch Moreland, Elvis Andrus, and Ryan Rua. The Rangers here in the ninth. And a fastball running away, ball one. Side 2 and 0. Now we get the natives restless in a hurry. Pitch walk to the leadoff man, Mitch Moreland. And we'll get a pinch runner for Moreland. As Hanser Alberto will come on to run. Okay, couldn't find the zone there, so now that's the tying run on first base. Andrews, a guy that can handle a bat. He's a good bunner that they should try to sacrifice. Ramirez in on the grass at third. And it's outside. Ball well, one. You got to make him throw a strike now. You don't swing. You just make him get in the zone first. Strike one and one. This is a, a guy is also a good hit and run man. That far from first base just fell down to back to first. But he's got pretty good numbers against Cody Allen, four for five. Nice curveball as that drops in for a strike. And he's in the hole one and two.
looped towards center going to drop for a hit and Alberto is going to go to third Martinez will have to run it back to the infield and now the Rangers come right back and they're set up with runners at the corners and nobody out. Yeah he went upstairs and inside with a fastball tried to jam him. He did get it inside but look at Andres gets enough of it to get it over the head of Lindor and into center field and good job going to third base. Uh, the pinch runner he doesn't hesitate he keeps going so now Texas with a good start first and third and nobody out Jared Hoying you got a bat here for Ryan Rua they want the left handed bat. Homer his last time up. Cody Allen looking for a strikeout here or a pop up on the infield. Instead, he almost throws it to the backstop ball. One. Well, that's this is a case where he has to be careful with his curveball in the dirt too. Boy, another one of the Ohio products. Fort Laramie. He got the start yesterday and had two hits, a run scored, and an RBI, and he takes ball two. So seven of the ten pitches that Cody has thrown have been out of the zone. At it, foul back two and one. A little surprised on the 2 0 that that's a pitch that he was well, trying to get after. Maybe there. looking looking for a fastball. He's just trying to get that tying run home, hit it in the air. Yeah. Is what he's looking to do. He's looking for something he can hit in the air and try and tie the game. And in the middle of the infield, they're, gonna, they're willing to turn the double play, give up the run, and let him tie it. Point. Now a chance to go for the punch out. Well, and tardy on his fastball. Big moment here for the tribe. Rangers at the corners with nobody out of the ninth. Indians up a run. And the 2 2 pitch. Breaking ball hit to Lindor. He'll go to second. There's one on the first. Not in time. And the Rangers have tied the game at four. First blown save of the year for Cody Allen. And all those leadoff walks seem to haunt relievers, especially late in the ballgame. Stepping into the Rangers. Now Tito's coming out. I don't know if he wants to check on that double play and see if I didn't see the slide. Did you happen to see what it went on at second base? You know, I was watching the the return throw after Kipnis got rid of it. I didn't really see where the contact was made. Well, that's what they're looking at. Uh, I would have imagined. Lindor had to go to his right. It won't take a run off the board, but it would give him two outs in the inning. No, he's going straight into the bag, at least that uh, briefly. I don't think he did anything uh, unless he slid late. Well, I couldn't see the contact from that angle, so I don't know. Ladies and gentlemen, the previous play under review, the Indians challenging a ruling on the field. Officials at replay command center in New York reviewing the previous play.
so the slide rule the Indians are asking in the challenge if it was a proper slide in the second at second base not in violation of the slide rule and the Indians are challenging that the runner interfered What's or that? violated the slide rule. Not with my luck, mister. You got to slide before you get to the base. You have to slide straight into the bag. And there's got to be rules on that step. You're fat. Man, I don't know. I, I don't think that's late. But it's close. Well, you're supposed to slide before the bag, which I guess technically he does. He's a shortstop. He's down. He's he goes straight in. Base. I don't think there's anything there that would. I guess the real defining element, Rick, is did he slide in time? Did he get down in time before the base? Yeah, you know, I, I, I don't know. Who interprets that? That's that's their job. That's how it's too hard to tell from there, from what we see. Maybe they see it a different way. Hunter Wendell stat the crew chief on your left will make the call. Wow. Oh, I don't know what he just said. Uh, I think, neither do I. Think, I think everything he, stands. Yes. I don't think we needed all the hand gestures. Just boom, everything as is. So the challenge from Terry Francona goes for not. It wasn't going to take a run off the board, but it would have given them two outs in the inning. As it stands, now the go-ahead run for Texas at first base and still only one out of the inning. And it started with a four pitch walk for Cody Allen to Mitch Moreland. That's how the inning began. Bullpen up, active, two men ready. Bobby Wilson cuts and misses. Wilson, 0 oh, oh for 2. He walked and scored way back in the third. Gorzolani just added to the ball club today. The left hander alongside Jeff Manchin. Pulp fell. Oh. Well, the Indians rallied and took the lead in the bottom half of the eighth inning on a two out RBI single by Juan Arebe. Only to watch Texas come right back in the top of the ninth and tie it back up. Now Cody Allen trying to get him to the bottom of the ninth in a tie game with a chance to win it maybe. And chased one, but with two strikes, he's trying to protect. Jerickson and Profire would be next. Two strike delivery is a broken bat right back to Cody. The second for one on the first time inning ending double play. So we will go to the bottom of the ninth. The Indians with a chance to win it. Tied at four. Rajay Davis due up second for the tribe in the home half of the ninth.
bottom of the ninth. Hanser Alberto will stay in the ball game, and he's at first base. Jared Hoing is now in left field. Luke Jackson, who worked the eighth and gave up the go-ahead run, is back out there to work tonight. That's kind of rare that you see a guy give up the go-ahead run late in the game and yeah, then come and back then and come back pick out. Right. The well, they tied the game up, so you can't bring in your closer. Not on the road. So now the Indians are going to try and come back and win this one in the ninth. Jan Gomes took over for Chris Jimenez, so he will lead off here in the bottom of the ninth. Jimenez was 0 for 3 tonight at the plate. Swings at the first pitch and fouls it off. Pulls it foul, third base side. And now Yad on the hole, 0 and 2. Fastball up high, and he strikes him out one down. Top of the order. And Rajay Davis, who has singled his last two times up, scored a run on the fifth. Davis now with 12. Make that 15. 15 runs scored in his last 17 games. And he takes a strike. Breaking ball pulled to third. Beltre. Who throws him out? Alberto just did get his glove hand out of the way. Two down. This guy usually very, very accurate on his throws. This one, a little up the line, and he's a good thing he got it out of the way. I've seen it before where runners run right into you and knocks that ball right out of your hand. Sometimes with a guy like Beltre he drops down and throws that yeah. sidearm in it'll it'll a little sink to yeah, it. Yeah, right back into the runner. You yeah, see tail. that. So Jason Kipnis with two outs and the base is empty. Breaking ball in the dirt. Kipnis had a two out RBI double in the fifth. At the time that gave the Indians a three to two lead. Low hook drops in for a strike, evens the kill. After a ball in the dirt, he's saying he got a piece of it. And now we're going to get the umpires to convert. Hold on a second, fellas, before everybody leaves. Oh, the home plate umpire saying it is a foul ball. The ball hit the dirt. I thought Trip Gibson, I didn't think he made that call initially. But he's saying, he's saying foul ball, it's in the dirt. Yeah, that hit the dirt. He catches it after it goes into the dirt and into his chest protector and holds on. Bannister just wants these guys to talk, so it hit the dirt. No, foul ball. Umpires concur.
Now the one two to Kipnis. And it's in the dirt. And thought he it was, was strike three. He was headed to the dugout. Yes, he was. Take a look here. It's a close pitch. See if he flinches on this one. That pitch right there, fastball. Don't know. No, he did. Jackson thought he had one. That catcher Wilson will, will go out. Well, he wants a fastball, and I don't know if uh, Jackson wants to throw it. He threw him in. A lot of curveballs in this at bat, so now they're going to talk about it, discuss on how they want to go about it here. Now the payoff. Foul ball on the fastball. Will Kipnis play the role of the hero, or will we have bonus baseball tonight? Pitch. Outside ball four. And up comes Francisco Lindor. On the year, Kipnis has three stolen bases. He has not been caught. Lindor. Oh, for his last 11. Takes low, ball one. This is a guy, though, looks like you can run on. He's got a pretty big leg kick. At least he had it on that last pitch. Second base, a nice snare by Profar, and he throws him out to end the inning. We will go to extra innings tonight, tied at four here at Progressive Field.
Extra innings presented by Jack Link's Beef Jerky all season long. Jack Link's beat your wild side. 4 4, 10th inning. Extra innings not been kind to the tribe this year. They're 1 and 3. Well, Texas is 1 and 4. So. These two teams will get their second win in extra innings. Let's see if the Indians can get it at home here. This is a game they really need. We talked about it earlier. They took the lead in the eighth. And unfortunately, Cody Allen blew his first save of the year. Dan Otero with his 18th appearance on the year. He's got the top of the order. Jerickson pro far, two for four tonight. Just made it dynamite. Play to end the ninth to send this game to extra innings. Slugs one in the left center. Martinez says, I'll take it. And he makes the catch one away. He gave Arch the visual and the audible. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you hold your arm up in case he takes a peek, and Davis has played both. He's played all three outfield positions. He knows better. But you know, when you get two guys out there that play center, the, the one that's playing now, you got to be aggressive and call for everything and take charge. Ian Desmond will be the batter now. He is 0 for 3. Picked up an RBI back in the third on a fielder's choice. And Otero low at the knees for a strike. Yeah, he cuts and misses. A bit outside. Oh, nice pitch. Boy, that had some good movement. Ran it in on him and strikes him out two away. Tied him up nicely. Watch how this ball runs inside and in off the plate. Great pitch. Boy, if you hit that one, you're not going to hit it fair if you try to pull it. And if you do hit it, it may it's going to bust your bat. And a strike at the knees for Prince Fielder. 0 for 3. Picked up a sack fly back in the first. But all the credit went to Jerks and Profar on that play. Down in the dirt. End of the bat foul. The one two and it's down low fielder able to lay off. Can't leave it up. Two balls two strikes fielder. 
batting average continues to sink. Whew. Didn't miss by a whole bunch. Full count. Yeah, but the left-handers, that's a, that's a nasty pitch. It's running away. You try and hit it, you can only put it on the ground. Really a good enough eye that he, he laid off of it. Let's change. Good change up and field her way out in front of him. Dan Otero, solid. One, two, three, tenth inning. Tied at four. Brian plays in the game back in the eighth inning. Two outs, bases empty. Jose Ramirez double off the wall and left. And then the next man up, Juan Oribe, smacked one up the gap. And that brought Ramirez around the score. And at that time, the Indians led it four to three. Yeah, it, it had an opportunity, took the lead. Gave up one in the ninth. We are here at the bottom of the tent, still tied. Indians looking for one and for a walk off. And a big breaking ball misses. First walk off at home. And Napoli was trying to end it right there, but he came up empty, two and one. Looking for something fat right here. The 3 1 pitch. Just a little bit high. Ball four. Winning run aboard to start the bottom of the 10th.
Carlos Santana. Bullpen busy for Texas. Remember, Luke Jackson pitched the eighth, in which the Indians scored a run. Pitched the ninth. And now he's back out here in the tenth. With the left hander up. Presumably, I would have thought for Santana. You know, to switch him over to the right yeah. side. with that one sitting away no that's not a strike down in the dirt two balls two strikes Napoli was reading that ball like it might hit the dirt. He, he got off the first base quite a bit as Wilson looked him back. Yeah, Mike's not your, you know, typical big slugger that can't run. He, he moves pretty good. He has a couple stolen bases. Not a burner by any means. Well, him being a former catcher, he realizes, you know, that breaking ball in the dirt, how tough it is to, to handle and keep in front of him. The only guy he left. was thinking of that ball in there and maybe getting himself into scoring position. Yeah, the only guy left on the bench is Tyler Naquin, but he does not appear to be you know, coming into the game anytime soon. You know, I thought maybe he'd be looking at a potential pinch runner situation. Second to get the force there. And Santana is safe at first on the fielder's choice. Roberto at first base couldn't get there. So his only play is going to get the lead runner. So they do get the out. Out comes Bannister. He'll make the move now to his bullpen. Say thank you very much. Nice job. So we've got a timeout in the tenth. The winning runs at first with one out. We'll be right back.
Hopkins had the winning run at first with one out. And the new pitcher is Alex Claudio. Looks like deception. He's been on nine times this year. Has allowed base runners eight of the nine times he's been out there. Claudio has permitted six of his 11 inherited runners to score. He's coming on with a man on first base and one out here in this situation. He's going to flip Ramirez over to the right side. You've got the switch hitter on deck, Martinez as well. Jose Ramirez is continuing to swing the bat very well. He has doubled each of his last two times up. He has four hits in the series. And he looks at a ball outside. Count one on one. Just missing outside when it's slow. How about that? He goes from eighty five to sixty five. Yeah, that would uh, that looked like it was in slow motion. Slow hook again. That's in for a strike, and it's two and two. It's like that game yesterday between San Diego and Seattle, and that uh, Christian Betancourt came in for the Padres. He was throwing 94, and then he threw something up there. It was 53 miles an hour, <laughs> like a knuckleball. Yeah. Pop back onto the screen. That was great, though. I mean, in a in an otherwise forgettable game for the Padres, when I mean, you give up 16 runs, there's not a lot to really true. But so at the end of the game, he's got Betancourt in there. He takes him out, puts him at I think second base, and then he brought Amarista in from the infield to pitch, and he finished it up. Got the last out for him. Save roster spots that way. <laughs> and the 2-2 inside almost nicked him. Full count. Good. Another good at bat for Jose Ramirez. Santana is literally a step and a half off the bag. Well, he's not going anywhere. You know that. He's looking at Sandy said don't think about it stay here. This did in the air it's caught good read by Santana he didn't just take off on the play and there are two away. <laughs> Terrific at bat it just didn't end well for Jose Ramirez. And so it's up to Michael Martinez or we will play on. Bat tonight. Two hits in his last two games played.
67 miles an hour. Barely made it to the plate, but he strikes him out. We'll go to the 11th inning, tied at four. Baseball presented by Jack Link's Beef Jerky all season long. Jack Link's Feed Your Wild Side. 11th inning. And Adrian Beltre will lead it off for Texas. Jeff Manship on for the 19th time this year. Well, he's going to get Beltre, Mazzara, and Alberto came into the game at first base. Starts him off with a breaking ball. Beltre thought it was high. Yes, the umpire said no. I'm calling him to strike. For Manship, right handers hitting 233 against him this year, just seven for 30. His first appearance in the series. Blown well, away, two and two. Full count. And he lifts one to center field. Michael Martinez makes the catch. One away. Red Sox in Baltimore tonight. And after five innings, the O's and the Sox have combined for 15 runs and 19 hits. Yeah, it's one of those, and that's a long way to go in that ballpark. You're not kidding. We talked about how much the ballparks in that uh, American League East, good hitters' parks. Tigers lead the Angels 2 0. They're in the ninth in Anaheim. Line 
drive base hit in the left field. Rajay Davis up with it but Mazzara the go ahead run aboard now for Texas with one out here in the 11th inning and Hanser Alberto will be coming up. Is that little fastball away little two seamer going away stay down and hit it hard the other way. Seven hits now for Texas. Lindor giving it a a try but it gets by him to hit too hard. Alberto came on as a pinch runner in the ninth and scored the tying run. It's his first at bat here now in the 11th. Over his last eight games, just two for 13 at the plate. Field normal depth. Outfield pretty much straight away. Probably don't have a lot of data to input into the old computer as far as how yeah. to play. Answer Alberto. Yeah, he started straight away and then see what happens. You can adjust by the way you see him swinging. A little bit outside. Chased one in the dirt. Yes, he did. He didn't get a piece of it. He went outside the zone, and Manship gets the strikeout. Two down. Got him to go fish there down in the dirt. Couldn't lay off of it. Ball hit right about where the plate is. You know, Rick, I. As this game goes along here, I'm reminded of something I heard the other night watching the NBA ball game between Golden State and Oklahoma City. It was game six afterwards, and Shaq and Charles Barkley, they were talking about hero ball, trying to do it yourself. And I think a lot of times in extra innings, we see that hero ball effect where guys go up instead of thinking about face hit, moving the runner, looking the other way. Everybody's trying to hit a home yeah, run. I don't disagree with that. Now there's a base hit by Elvis Andrews. That's his game, man. He he has one home run on the year, but he's a, just a hitting machine. Well, he got the big base hit off Cody Allen back in the ninth after the leadoff walk to push it to first and third, and set up that inning where they were able to come score, and he comes in again. And with two outs, gets a base hit. You move a guy up, you get him into scoring position, and Tito going to go out and make a change. Two hits allowed by Manship in two thirds of an inning. No walks, a strikeout. And with two on, he's going to go to the new left hander, Tom Gorzolani, who will be facing Jared Hoing when we come back.
four in the 11th, two on, two out. And the new pitcher is Tom Gorzolani. Gorzolani in 19 games at AAA Columbus, one up, one down, a 338 earn run average. He'll be facing the left-handed hitting Jared Hoying, who came on in the ninth inning, picked up an RBI on a fielder's choice. Gorzolani, left-hander, 33 years old. And the Illinois native delivers inside and fouled off by Hoying. It got a piece of Gomes. I think yeah, I think it did that time. Saved the umpire. This was way in off the dish and boy it was like an emergency thing. Tied him up and did went off Gomes. Popped him up sky high infield. Santana foul ground. Oh, hey. Straddling the line makes the grab inning over. Bottom of the 11th coming up 4 4 in Cleveland. The 11th inning. 10,524 turned out on a beautiful night here at the ballpark. Warm once again. It was 72 at game time. Ideal. And a good ball game. 4 4 now. Bottom of the 11th. Lonnie Chisenhall will lead off. Then it's Jan Gomes and Rajay Davis. Rangers scored first with a run in the top half of the opening frame. Indians countered with a two run homer from Mike Napoli. Rangers tied it in the third. Indians went ahead on the two out RBI double by Kittness in the fifth. And then the Rangers tied it again on a Ryan Rua homer in the seventh inning. Indians would go back in front in the eighth on an RBI double or a base hit with two outs by Juan Uribe. Only to see the Rangers come back and tie it in the ninth. And now Ronnie Chisenhall down the left field line. And it got hung up in the seat, so he'll stop at second goal. base. There you go. And the Indians have the winning run in scoring position to start the bottom of the 11. There you go, shoot it inside out. Pretty good swing there by Alani. They were way off the line. You see where Beltre wanted to throw his glove. That ball gets stuck in the padding over there as it caroms off the wall. Fair ball, double for Chisenhall, his sixth. 
So there's the winning run right there. Gomes struck out his first and only time up when he came on in the ninth inning. He's bunting and it's foul. in at the corners and Gomes smacks one up the middle in the center field Chisholm all coming around third he'll be waved home and he is safe the Indians win it <laughs> five four the final in 11 as Jan Gomes bounced one right back through the middle the goose pile they are all piling on <laughs> Indians get their first extra inning win at home this year, second on the season, and they avoid the sweep, taking the series finale. As I said to you before, I thought a game they had to have. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Their first walk off of the year at home, and they desperately needed this ball game. And you come in, Chisinau hits the double, goes the other way off the left-hander Gomes. He's been struggling so bad this year, uh, you know, as far as average goes. He, he was going to bunt to try and get him over, and then he finds a hole. He finally gets one over the pitcher's head, finds a hole, and it ends up being the game winner. And boy, that's he needed something like that, something very positive. He's been able to drive in and hit with runners in scoring position. 333 coming into this game, but there's the game winner, and the Indians do not get swept. They will salvage the final game of this three game series against the Rangers. And you can see everybody very happy for Gomes. I just hope they didn't break his new glasses. <laughs> he, he was looking at him, wasn't he? <laughs> He's been waiting all spring to get him. Hope they didn't bust him up. Oh, boy. I'm sure Andre's down there trying to find him. He's look, still looking at those glasses. He's like, you guys better not have broke my glasses. <laughs> Oh, what a good win for the Indians here tonight as they cap it with the 11 inning victory 5 for the final score tribe is now 27 and 24 and Texas will leave town 31 and 22 and next up for the Indians the world champion Kansas City Royals tomorrow night a 7 o'clock start as we begin a fantastic four game series hope you'll be with us here at the ballpark if not we'll have it for you right here on Sports Time Ohio for Rick Manning. And Andre Not. I'm Matt Underwood. Thanks so much for watching. Stay tuned. Indians Live is next.